Hello, hello. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon. How you doing, Henri? I'm doing all right, actually. Um, kind of rested, uh, surprisingly, because I went for a run this morning, but I think I had a good run because I was rested. Um, but I certainly want to check how you're doing because, uh, you know, you've had an eventful 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I didn't get out for that run yet today, but I'm hoping after this uh, should get a little time for that. So that'll be good. <laughs> and time you deserve. Um, yeah, appreciate it. But yeah, things are good. Um, it's been a uh, wow, busy week, a um, little over a week now since we've uh, launched a bunch of new features and we've had a bunch of these streams um and uh it's been cool going through different examples we've got a couple different ones to to go over today a little mm -hmm. more focus on experiments yeah it's uh it has been a week and uh as i said last week you know the day felt like 24 hours felt like a week and now a week feels like a month almost <laughs> uh, but that's how it goes when you launch some uh potentially game-changing features <laughs> in uh, what is already, um, to quote uh, some developers back in the day, um, the Cadillac of web performance tooling. Um, well, I've been using it long before I, I was part of the team, so I, I agree. <laughs> you know, I got a quick story, actually. I remember um, sort of harassing someone to help me out with web page tests some time back. Uh, because I was like, this is amazing. What does this mean? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, but it, it's been uh, it's been a delight being part of the team, uh, you know, working with yourself, Tim, Gina, the rest of the team over at uh, WebPage Test. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, for those who don't know, Scott had a presentation last night in New York. Uh, it was uh, I don't know if it was your first in person in since the big day. <sighs> since uh <laughs> since we all stopped doing that yeah exactly um, exactly yeah yeah um yeah it was fun we had a good turnout uh i think um at least 40 people um showed up and uh had some good talks uh, michael from the catch point engineering side gave a nice talk on uh on react and some of the conventions that they're they're using um on uh on catch point engineering and I talked a bit uh, higher level, I guess, on web page test and what what we've released in the last week, which was more than I could cover in, in the 20 minutes I had. Yeah. But <laughs> do what you can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it was good. Yes. For those wondering, uh, basically, um, there was a meetup last night in New York uh, and um, Scott was one of the presenters and uh, for you know 20 minutes, he got to talk about uh, web page test and the new features to a live audience. Uh, there were a couple of photos circulating on Twitter and uh, it was it was kind of heartwarming to see. So yeah, yeah it was fun. Um, yeah, so it's nice to be back on here. Um, mm -hmm. Can't quite tell through the list. Uh, do you think we had some overlap with uh, folks who joined us for prior streams or a good mix uh, of- Certainly, I, I mean, I see some familiar names, certainly. Um, <clears throat> Aaron's in here, hello, Aaron. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, I'm sure some others will will pop in. Uh, but um, that being said, uh, I do want to allow you uh, time to get things rolling because I know we're not going to be on for too too long, um, but roughly a half hour, kind of like a lunch and learn, folks. So uh, it's going to be uh, very interesting. We're going to deep dive. Uh, we're calling this unlocking experiments. So we're going to deep dive into experiments. Uh, so what I'm going to do, Scott, is I'm going to step away. Uh, I'm going to be in the back channels, uh, keeping an eye on the chat and things like that. And, you know, if I have to put in some relevant links, I will. Uh, and that said, sir, the stage is yours. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I guess I will share my screen. Taking a minute here. All right. There we go. 
All right. It says I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, so I'll trust it. <clears throat> so I think, um, you know, given that a, a more than a few folks are uh, are joining us again after some of the streams that I've done in the past uh, week with Tim and Henri and, and other teammates, um, I won't go, uh, you know, I, I won't overlap too much with um, some of the things we've already showed, but just uh, to set a little context, um, this session is going to be a little bit more focused on just the experiments portion of uh, of our new offerings. Um, and really two, two big uh, features landed with WebPage Test Pro. Um, uh, and a large portion of those are not, um, are not restricted to just pro users. So um, we have this new section called opportunities and experiments that uh, you can get to from any test result page. You can find it right here uh, in the, um, uh, in the uh, result navigation. And also, if you're on a, a summary page, uh, you can find a little hint up here uh, to the various sections. And those opportunities uh, in that section are broken into a few categories, so quickness, usability, and resilience. And um, for now, at least, so we're, we're iterating and adding to these and, and improving them uh, each day. But for now, at least, uh, quickness has uh, more opportunities, more diagnostic checks than uh, the, the other categories. but um, uh, you know, I think that reflects sort of the historic nature of web page tests, which has been um, performance focused primarily for a long time. Um, so we're sort of broadening uh, a little bit of our, our view of um, what constitutes a good user experience into uh, not just quickness, but uh, usability measurements and resilience. Um, so if, as you scroll through this page, uh, you can find uh, observations, diagnostics that we ran on, in this case, uh, our test site, the Metric Times, which is a, a fake news site. Um, for those who have not seen it, I can just pull it up here to give you an idea of, of what we're talking about. This is uh, an example site, sort of like a unit test for our uh, opportunities, which um, triggers every, uh, every diagnostic we run to uh, throw an alert and say, you know, something's not looking quite as optimized as it could be. Um, and from there, we make some suggestions uh, about things that you might change uh, about that, uh, the way the, the code is delivered, um, either in the form of tips, like in this case, there's a slow time to first bite, and we recommend some tips uh, that you might consider going off and trying uh, on your own, um, versus uh, sometimes, um, instead of tips, we'll actually offer experiments. Um, and in this case, this is kind of the, the one that I've been showing each time. Um, for a lot of sites, this is the first uh, opportunity that, um, that offers a uh, experiment that you might um, be able to try. Um, and that's just because a lot of sites happen to have um, JavaScript files that are referenced in uh, such a way, a default way, <laughs> that they block the page from showing as soon as it, uh, it otherwise might, um, if they were loaded in a way that kind of lets it show sooner. Um, so in this case, uh, this diagnostic noticed that we have several on the metric times, several scripts that are loaded just with script tags without any attributes to say um, that they should be loaded in any other way but uh, the default way, which is to block page rendering. Uh, and if you want to kind of see that visually, we can look at a timeline of how this page loads. And it's purposely built in a way that's um, pretty slow. Uh, this was on a 3G connection from Atlanta on a Moto G uh, Android <clears throat> uh, emulated Chrome. And you can see right around uh, four seconds, we get our, our first paint of content. Um, not ideal. Ideally, you'd want to you'd wanna move that back here. and. Um, if you go into the waterfall for this page, you can see a bunch of these resources here uh, with little orange X marks on them. And that shows that that particular resource was blocking page rendering. Um, so that was that was a little icon that was added uh, not too long ago. And it's, it's really helpful uh, in identifying some of the most problematic requests in a, in a waterfall. Um, so 
if you were to look over at, uh, once again, at the uh, opportunities and experiments page, you'd see those same blocking resources, uh, these same JavaScript files are blocking rendering and they're flagged right here. And it offers a few experiments uh, that you might consider trying uh, to change um, that the impact that they have, uh, the negative impact on how that page loads. Um, so if I wanted to run this experiment, I could add it to my cart here. I've actually got a few selected already because uh, I was on this result page earlier. Um, these experiments are additive. So I can uh, find different ones throughout this page, like not only uh, were JavaScript files blocking rendering, but some CSS files were referenced in such a way that they, uh, they blocked rendering, which is what they do by default. Um, and you know, in the case of CSS, sometimes that's, that's actually what you want. You want to block uh, the page from starting to render until the styles are there. Um, but there are potentially ways to get these requests, uh, uh, these, these CSS rules into the browser sooner. Um, like for example, if one of these files is small enough, uh, you could look in the waterfall and see the actual weight of that file. If it's say, you know, 10 kilobytes, something like that, maybe that's a good candidate for uh, inlining that file. So that's one thing that you might want to do here. We could uncheck the others and just check this one and say, I want to inline that file. And that'll actually, uh, on, the, on the server side, before the page is delivered, our experiment server will um, include the contents of that site CSS file directly into the HTML page so that it doesn't, so the browser does not have to go out and fetch it once the HTML arrives. Um, so inlining is a pretty cool performance pattern. Some of the fastest sites on the web have been using inlining for over a decade, uh, probably, probably two decades, really. Uh, Google search, I think, was one of the first sites I saw that did that. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, it's it's a no-brainer why it works. So um, that's that's one to consider. Um, there are other CSS files I could choose to inline as well. Um, so you can see how these are sort of added to my cart, so to speak, as I uh, as I go through this page. And I'm just going to see which ones are checked here. So I had a couple others that were checked. Um, the two that I just showed, and then we've got some that I checked earlier because I'm returning to this page. Um, so I'm just going to uncheck those um, just so they don't apply because what i'm doing is on this experiments page i can hit go and um, kick off an experiment but i can return to this page and modify uh, what i had run before um, by uh, seeing what was checked before and maybe uncheck them and run different ones so in this case i've got two now uh, defer all of the javascripts and I'm going to inline the site CSS file. And I guess maybe I'll inline this one as well. This is a, a font file. So all it has inside that file is uh, a couple font face declarations to load uh, external fonts. And uh, inlining uh, font face rules can be particularly great for performance because if you have an external CSS file that contains uh, font face declarations, then your fonts are kind of loaded in like a two-step uh, pattern where the browser first has to go out and fetch this CSS file and only then discovers that it needs to subsequently uh, fetch fonts that are uh, defined in that file. Um, so uh, if we could, for example, uh, inline this, uh, this file and put those directly into the head of the page, for example, um, that could potentially uh, speed up the, um, the time at which those fonts are, are downloaded, particularly because I know this site and I know that site.css actually contains uh, plenty of font, um, font family rules that reference this, uh, these, these font faces like um, uh, Meriwether, for example. And if you're familiar with fonts, you know that a font will not be downloaded by the browser until some uh, element in the page is styled using that font. So just you know, just bringing these font face files into the head alone uh, won't necessarily cause them to be requested sooner. Um, but by inlining this uh, the site CSS as well, I know that you know the body of the page, for example, is uh, is styled. I can 
open it up here and, and just verify that, uh, that it's, yeah. So the body, if you can see, is using Meriwether right here. So right when that file in, uh, right when that part of site CSS uh, is um, discovered by the browser, it's gonna kick off a request to a font family that's defined as Meriwether. So combining those into the head of the page uh, potentially can get that, that font loaded much, much sooner. Um, so back to our experiments here. So I've got a couple selected once again. Um, and at this point, you know, I've selected a couple that are uh, primarily um, focused on uh, how soon the page starts to render. So I've gotten some blocking resources out of the way. That might be a good point at which to kick off the start of this experiment because uh, it's sort of isolated, right? We're not mixing um, various experiments that might have side effects on each other. So these these two in combination are kind of nice. Like I've got the blocking resources out of the way. Um, and just to make sure, I know that there's one more CSS file here, this uh, jQuery UI CSS, which I know is quite large. And uh, if that's blocking render, we probably don't want to inline it because I know it's it's too large to inline. It'll bloat the size of the, the HTML. So I don't want to do that. It's not really an option there, but I don't want it to block rendering in, in this particular site also because I know as the author of this metric time site that the parts of jQuery UI that we're using are not, uh, are not actually visible in the top of the page uh, or the initial view that you get when you load the page. So it's sort of a low priority style sheet that doesn't need to be blocking rendering. So in that case, I could choose to load that style sheet asynchronously. And what that does, uh, because to anyone who who might think, wait, uh, how do I load CSS asynchronously? That's not a that's not a standard that the browser supports. Well, you'd be correct in thinking that um, there are some workarounds that allow us to mimic that behavior, though. Um, and in this case, what we're doing is this classic workaround uh, that um, uh, involves setting a style sheet's media attribute to print, which causes it to download in uh, in parallel instead of blocking rendering. And as soon as it loads, we switch the uh, the media attribute back to all or screen. So it applies to the page. Um, and that's just kind of like a, you know, sort of a, a hack or a workaround that's been around a very long time if you really do want a CSS file to load without blocking rendering. So that's what this one will do if I check that box. All right. So, um, Further down, we have uh, other opportunities that are not dealing so much with um, uh, with uh, render blocking. So I'm just going to hit go on that one. And there's been a little bit of a queue today on uh, how long these um, experiments are taking. A lot of people are using the tools, so we're we're working on scaling up our um, our uh, test agent sites try to get the cues shorter, but it's good to see a lot of people are using this. Um, when you kick off an experiment, you'll get this, uh, this little waiting page and uh, you can see exactly uh, what was applied in each case and the experiments that are running. Um, you'll see that there are two here, uh, an experiment and an original uh, that says control run. Um, what's interesting about uh, this comparison is that uh, we don't want to compare an experiment run that went through this proxy that uh, it actually uses. Um, we run uh, our, our, our optimizations uh, to the page. We run them on edge uh, functions um, on Netlify in this case. Um, we don't want that to happen just to the experiment page and then compare that to the original test because it's not really going to be a fair comparison if we do that. And that's because just running anything through that experiment uh, proxy edge function um, happens to change the performance of the page ever so slightly. It might actually speed it up um, depending on the test location and how close, uh, for example, in proximity that test device is to the nearest uh, Netlify edge um, CDN location. So latency uh, improves. Um, they have locations all around the world that are hosting these, uh, these edge functions. So, 
um, its potential that just running an experiment um, without making any modifications um, could make the site a little perform a little differently. So we run a control run and compare that to the experiment. So the control run is the original site that's just passed through the proxy with no changes applied. Um, so that's going to take a minute to run, uh, but I can, let's see, I can go to another uh, experiment that I was running earlier. Let's see, yeah, this one's pretty cool. Um, okay, so while that one's running, uh, I ran, um, as an example, a test of Airbnb.ca, uh, the Canadian Airbnb site from Toronto. Um, yesterday. And this one was sort of interesting um, in that the, uh, so the LCP, uh, the largest contemporary paint that it reports uh, is pretty high. Um, it actually says that, you know, start render and um, first content are very good. Um, but it's always important to, uh, to not just rely on the metrics that you see in these uh, in these tables, but to actually take a look at how it renders visually, because sometimes some of those metrics are a little different than how you might define uh, the uh, the user experience of um, how this page loads. And in this case, I think Airbnb is a good example of that. Um, this is uh, again loaded on a cable connection um, in uh, Edge browser, not Chrome, uh, but a Chromium browser. And what we have, I'm actually going to make the the thumbnail size bigger is that you know we've got that initial paint around a second and a half um, but it's just a skeleton uh, of the content so this is like a, a common pattern um, for uh, client-side rendered sites where we uh, we have um, content that's fetched after the html arrives in the browser and in order to kind of make the, the waiting experience uh, while that content is being fetched, um, make that waiting experience a little better, um, developers have uh, started using these kind of gray box uh, layouts that you know you see them on Facebook, um, all sorts of sites deploy this pattern. Um, so that's what our initial paint is, but it's not actually content yet. It's just these gray boxes and because all of this content is being generated uh, with JavaScript, um, it's not until seven or eight seconds um, when we start to get actual content coming in um, to the page. And that's because up until here, or somewhere around here, uh, there are no images for the browser to really discover in the HTML. It's, um, it's generated, those images are generated by eventually by JavaScript that makes that HTML that then, then the browser can discover the images in it and go off and fetch them. Um, so ideally, um, maybe a fun experiment to run, I thought, would be to uh, see what would happen if, in this case, and this is sort of a general example, by the way, nothing about Airbnb particular. This is a really common pattern. Um, but in this case, if we go to the bottom of our quickness opportunities, we can see this one that's flagged. And I, I expected it would be there um, because you see that familiar pattern of uh, the gray boxes and no real content for quite a while. And then it sort of populates very quickly. Um, kind of a signature of the, uh, the, the single page app pattern, right? Um, client side rendered uh, content. And sure enough, we've got a uh, an opportunity here that that noticed that that uh, 298 kilobytes of the page content um, was generated after delivery. So, in order to get this comparison, we um, just do a simple, um, you know, kind of dumb comparison between the HTML that was there at the start and the HTML in the finalized DOM, and just kind of get a rough idea of how much of it was generated after. Uh, long after arrival. Um, ideally, um, you know, for the way that browsers are optimized, uh, the more of that HTML content that can be there when the HTML is initially delivered, uh, the better, um, you know, loading experience you can get because the browser is designed to uh, parse through that HTML and find references to uh, images and style sheets and scripts and things like that and go kick off those requests as soon as possible. 
Um, so as, as much time as it takes delaying that, uh, that meaningful HTML to be generated, uh, that's a delay that you're going to see uh, in the user experience. So an interesting uh, experiment here, and I would say um, as a caveat that this uh, among experiments is probably the most experimental <laughs> of the ones we offer um, in that, uh, you know, sometimes depending on the architecture of a site, uh, this won't turn around a result that's, um, that's very interesting. But what, uh, what is kind of cool about it when it does work is it saves you a lot of time uh, and effort in figuring out, well, what if I did generate more of our HTML content on the server side? Um, would that even improve user experience? And uh, would it be worth my effort to do that? Because generally doing that change is a lot of effort, right? It's not something that you can just very easily uh, test on a live site. Um, so this experiment, uh, if I were to run it, does exactly that. It just, uh, at the at the worker level where our experiments are run, it takes the final state of the HTML of this, uh, this finally rendered site and delivers that upfront as if Airbnb served the HTML uh, fully populated with, with content right from the server. Um, and I ran this, I can, I can hit go on it, but uh, since we, we've only got 30 minutes here, I'll, I'll show you a test result from uh, how that how that impacted uh, the loading experience um, when I ran this last night. So you can see right around you know four seconds, I think it was actually three three seconds. Um, we started getting images, and that's because the browser was able to uh, discover references to images very early uh, in in the page delivery because they were in they were referenced in the html to start so here we go at 3.7 seconds i paused it so this is a experiment result uh, landing page we can see uh three and a half seconds versus almost eight seconds before uh, and that's on a desktop wi-fi connection um we're getting content a lot sooner um, you can see you know text is in here uh, as opposed to gray boxes and again, nothing about Airbnb in particular here. Um, also want to be very clear to suggest that this is not necessarily a good change for them to make depending on the priorities. Um, there's obviously a lot of thought into why they're serving uh, client-generated uh, HTML like this on the homepage. Maybe it changes so frequently that it would not make sense for them to generate it on the server. But um, just as for sake of an experiment, um, I think it's it's really, really interesting and powerful to be able to say, what if, you know, in these cases, um, what if uh, we were to serve that HTML up front? So you can see right here, three and a half seconds. If I, uh, I even back it out to every 100 milliseconds, maybe it's even earlier. Let's see. Got right around... Yeah, 3.3 seconds. <laughs> so that's only one optimization that I made there. Um, there are still in that Airbnb page, I believe there were some uh, render blocking JavaScript files. Yep, so if I were to check that in addition to uh, swapping the HTML, uh, that would potentially be uh, even more of a, um, a win because we would get in these early keyframes potentially uh, you know we could we could see the page start to render as soon as this gray box one does perhaps or even even earlier um, that one had the the blocking scripts as well but it was just a much much lighter HTML document um, the the time to first bite was quicker um, for a couple reasons that I should mention here real quick before I wrap up this um, this demo. But um, one thing to mention is that when you run this particular experiment, we're actually on the on the worker level, we're actually um, fetching the a static version of that final generated HTML output. Uh, and uh, waiting while that happens. And, and so you can see if you look at the, the comparison here, that our worker is actually taking a little while here, it's almost you know, almost two seconds um, of time that probably would not be there, uh, or almost definitely would not be there if the 
HTML was on the same server and they were just serving something up that they had locally. Um, so the potential for this experiment is that it actually would be even faster. Um, like say, I know in this example that our worker takes about a second and a half um, as of this, uh, in this particular experiment, it took about a second and a half to fetch that HTML remotely from web page test from a prior test run. Um, and that time is probably uh, time that's that could be considered uh, not actually realistically part of um, the experiments real time that would that it would show if you were to implement this change. So that's one thing that we're working on uh, improving. I know Tim, uh, Tim, the director of uh, engineering here at Webpage Test last night landed the change to make that fetch happen just a little faster um, by um, optimizing what we're fetching. So this experiment should start to run a little, little quicker, um, even than it did yesterday. And um, you know, we're uh, we're looking at different ways at um, at making it even closer to uh, to mimicking the real uh, result. So um, those were the couple of uh, examples I wanted to show for today. I know we're probably just at about time for the half an hour, so I will uh, jump back off screen sharing here. All right, hey, and I'll jump back in to my own screen sharing. Uh, what a powerful demo right there. Um, yeah, that was kind of cool, right? It just I had was... me thinking. First of all, I was like, yay, Toronto, the yeah. Airbnb. <laughs> then, then suddenly I was like, oh, no, the LCP, Airbnb. <laughs> well, but, but, yeah, but I mean, I yeah, um, yeah, it took, took a few tries to test that one because I, I went to Airbnb.com first and set Toronto, and then I noticed right away in the opportunities that it said, well, your first request is a redirect to CA, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I thought, okay, that, would, that wasn't very realistic. I should just go there direct, yeah. right? So yeah. start it over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, redirects. People don't realize sometimes you start to look at the waterfall and you see exactly how much time you lose in a redirect. So, mm -hmm. you know, you might as well just skip it uh, entirely. Mm -hmm. But... Mm -hmm. uh, but not that, uh, you know, it had me thinking suddenly about, you know, React rendering patterns. Like, there, there must be a book out there. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, Airbnb in particular, I should mention, was one of the, the early sites I remember that gave us really good uh, alternatives to that pattern. Like, they had a server hydration. I think they might have been the first ones to, to even use that term mm -hmm. or, or that pattern. So, um yeah, I mean, there are lots of options, and now frameworks kind of, uh, you know, popularly do this for us. Uh, Next.js, Nuxt, um, all of those have the option of rendering content on the server or, or statically, or yeah. you know, so. Um, an experiment like that might give you, uh, you know, an idea of if it's worth turning on that feature for a particular template on a site or something like that, if you're using a framework like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's super interesting. And, um, you know, as you mentioned during the stream, uh, companies will decide where to make the investment in terms of, you know, loading. And yeah. something that may look like an anti-pattern to you isn't the full story. And, you know, the bigger picture is like, oh, sure. no, they're doing it here because... At the end, they want it to be like this, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's something that often people may not realize. They're like, "Oh, that's not fast enough." It's like, "No, no, no, it's not the whole story." <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I think everyone has the experience of uh, someone who, who might jump in with the assumption that there's an obvious way to make everything better, and you know, I think we're we're trying with these demos to walk a, a balance of um, of using real sites in the wild, but um, being very clear that we're not saying this is necessarily a thing they should do, yeah. um, but just, you know, what if, uh, what if, uh, you know, this, this particular page was generated uh, on the server, mm -hmm. would it make a significant difference? In that case, it looked like it did. So that was mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's just as useful to know uh, if, if you run that and find out that it didn't really yeah. make a big difference well you could direct your your priorities to something else that's higher priority yep. um so yeah that's kind of the, the workflow of these these experiments you get to run more of more than you could if you're writing them manually 
Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and and the idea of creating that post generated HTML load process in your experiment out the gate again you know like you'd mentioned it's like this would not have been an easy procedure possible but not just you know one click operation or two clicks <laughs> you know so um all good uh, scott thank you very much for that and we did have uh, one quick question i'm trying to remember uh it came from aaron and i started i'm gonna bring it on stage um I mean, is it was during some of your conversations, and I wish I'd I jotted down what exactly uh, was being said when he asked this. Uh, but yeah, uh, okay, I, I think I could I could take that one. I'm I'm assuming that it's talking about uh, the inline pattern. Um, mm -hmm. So you can apply that to scripts or uh, or CSS files. Currently, I think in the future we'll probably offer it for SVG files too. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for now, one or the other, all it does is um, for a particular given script tag in a page, it replaces that script tag with a uh, open close script tag and the contents of that file directly into it, um, mm -hmm. right in place. So um, you get the same loading dependency order that you would have you would have had if if it was an external script. Um, same with the style sheet. So we're uh, replacing a link rel style sheet with a style uh, element and the styles get dumped right into it. Um, so uh, that's how that inline task works. Um, I didn't get into uh, any create experiments, but you can modify the DOM in custom ways with experiments too, um, beyond what we just suggest trying. Uh, mm -hmm. You can add your own style element to the end of the head or the end of the body. Um, so there's just it's kind of infinite possibilities of what you can do with this tool. Yeah, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Um, Aaron, thank you very much for that question. And what I'd like to do right now is just uh, before we close out, I want to get into a few announcements. I think I'll be able to share my screen. I really hope so. I've never really practiced this. So this better work, entire screen window. Maybe I'll do that and... Uh, I don't see the window, so give me a quick second here. Maybe I'll do this. Um, folks, hold on here. Oh, I know what's wrong. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to come back. Uh, oh, there I am. So if I do share, I go share screen. I go window. And this is what I'm looking for. Awesome. Now, um, the first thing I want to do is talk about uh, the fact that um, you can see my you can see my screen. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is talk about tomorrow's uh, stream. It's going to be a very interesting one, actually. Uh, we're inviting two uh, very proficient developers to in this sort of like phone booth, phone phone in session uh, where uh, they're going to come in and for fifteen minutes. Uh, ask, 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 ask uh, both Tim and Scott uh, some questions about web page tests, uh, some of the new features. Um, we have Wes Boss coming in, uh, Yi of Syntax FM, a, yeah. a very uh, proficient and well uh, regarded uh, full stack dev and yeah, uh, educator. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be awesome to have Wes on. Yeah, uh, an educator who uh, will also going to be, we're going to be on his uh, podcast soon. So we'll be able to talk about that Very tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. And uh, we have also Harry Roberts coming in um, and uh, uh, another well regarded developer consultant on the web performance side, uh, mm -hmm. award winning. Uh, but he's going to come in as well to talk about uh, the new features that he likes and he'll be yeah. able to ask us some questions. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, Harry is uh, a longtime power user of uh, web page test. I've learned a bunch from uh, articles he's written about using the tool, and uh, it'll be cool to get uh, get his take on you know some of the new features and how he might uh, you know tinker with pages, uh, particularly I think in the create section of the yep, yep. And as you said, you know, so much is possible. And, you know, Harry would be the one to discover some of these possibilities. So <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
it'll be interesting to to certainly have him on. Um, something else that we'd uh, absolutely want to talk about. Now, at WebPage Chess, we are our proud sponsors of a fantastic uh, web performance uh, conference taking place called Lazy Load. Um, it's in its second year, and it's all online. And it's going to be taking place June 10th, which is Friday, and June 17th, which is the Friday after that. And uh, we have, or there are fantastic speakers uh, along this year. Um, they're actually right down here, actually. So for Friday, we're going to have Fershad, who's actually written for our blog in the past. Um, Love yeah, of Fuller. Fantastic. Yeah, great dude, great dude. Uh, Lovell Fuller, actually, who's going to talk about this little-known library called Sharp, uh, which is an image processing uh, library, which is amazing, powers a lot of uh, frameworks that uh, you know well. Uh, we have cool. Simon, Simon Hearn, um, Annie Sullivan, who's back. I think she spoke last year. Andrea Ver Verkili, that's it. I think I got that right. Um, he's going to be speaking Friday, uh, Paul Calvano Friday, wow, Tammy Everts. Lineup. Yeah, it's a fantastic lineup. Tammy Everts is going to be there on Friday. Who am I missing Friday? I think there's some other people. Uh, anyways, um, so we're sponsors. Um, check that out. Uh, we'll post the link where I think we've posted it before on our uh, uh, webpage test Twitter account. But um it's going to be something worth checking out, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Of course, we want to talk about the fact that, uh, where is that page? There it is. Um, who are these two? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. so Tim and I will be doing a little oh. workshop as well, right? Exactly. At Lazy Load. Yeah, that'll and, be fun. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So you'll be able to, once again, um, sort of get a more sort of formal setting in, in a walkthrough on uh, web page tests and some of the fantastic features that we have uh, that we released uh, just a week ago, opportunities and experiments and everything in between. Um, yeah. I think that's the last thing I want to talk about. Um, I want to make sure here, web directions, that, the workshop. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, let me uh, stop sharing my screen here. That being said, um, Folks, thank you very much for joining us once again. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a thanks pleasure, for being here. <laughs> pleasure to have everyone come Until back. next time. I know, right? Which is basically tomorrow at 3 yeah. p.m. Yeah, that'll be a good one. Yep. Get, yep. Some, uh, get some outside feedback and opinions. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. going to be like talk radio, like I'd mentioned yes. prior. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that said, folks, thank you very much. Uh, see you guys, uh, see everyone here tomorrow. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that you shoot us a little tweet over at Real Web Page Test. As usual, we're pretty active out there. Uh, you could also find Scott Gell on Twitter, who's also oh, very active. You. And uh, and then you know you you can ping myself as well if you want. That's a good uh, follow right there. Yeah. Well, well, merci. And uh, and that's it, folks. Thank you very much. Have yourself a great rest of the day, and thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, Andre. Thanks, Scott. All right. Cheers.